Hi, this is Abdul Bhartier, and today we have with us Ben, the CEO of uh, Storage. Yes. The name itself is very interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's talk about something even more interesting, and which is your keynote this morning. Okay. Because when you look at open source, we always talk about technology. Sure, sure. We don't talk about business behind it. Right, right. So, to, to tell us a bit about, you know, the business of open source. Sure. Well, I mean, the business of open source is always a question, right? Um, and I think. You know, open source world has experimented with a lot of different models over the years, open core and licensing and service and support. And I think what I point I tried to make in the in the uh, in the keynote is we used to think in terms of start build a big community, then have some kind of a XS service, a SaaS, a PaaS, or whatever, and then you'd move into the enterprise. And unfortunately, that middle section is much harder to get at these days, simply because. Almost every cloud, uh, public cloud, is using open source as a, as a loss leader. And so, what we tried to do with our uh, announcement this morning at Keynote is basically find a way for open source community as a whole to monetize the decentralized cloud, which I think is a is a great way for open source to monetize in the way that it should, which is the more usage you get, the more revenue you have flowing into you. Let's stick to the business part before we switch to yeah, storage. Sure. Um, you know the recently Redis Labs story mm -hmm. happened where, so I do feel that after talking to a lot of smaller companies, do feel you know the heat or pressure. Sure. With the VCs are there, they want return. Sure. So what is your you know because you have led so many open source companies before sure. that, and all of them had pure open source business model. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Ben Gluster and 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 Docker both had had open source business models, and I think um, I think there are a lot of really good business models that come. From serving the enterprise, the large enterprise, right? So I think I think when you're going after the large enterprises, you can have models that service multi-cloud or that you know a mix of legacy and and uh, and new software. The large enterprises tend to want um, you know customized service and support. So all those all those good models actually really work. So you look at the successful open source companies, and most of them have made a business going after the enterprise. I think the challenge is, is that that's very tough. It takes a lot of investment. And obviously, you know, the growth is in the cloud, and right now that's what has been missing as an open source model. So I don't think the solution is restrictive licensing. I don't think the solution is yelling at the cloud companies or complaining about the cloud companies. I think it's can we find a new type of cloud that supports monetization of open source, and that's what we've been trying to build. So what is that new kind of cloud? Well, I mean, the new kind of cloud storage is an example of it. There are others who are doing sim similar things, but basically, with the Sort of your traditional public cloud, and I feel bad saying traditional because it's only 10 years old, right? right? But you know, traditional public cloud, um, you know, people invest billions of dollars in building out data centers, uh, and then charge people to use those data centers, and they, you know, you can scale on demand, and that's fantastic as a user. Um, the decentralized cloud is a different model. It says basically, we're going to build a cloud, but it's built out of resources, storage, or compute that is brought to the cloud by individuals or small companies who are doing so, and they get competent for doing it. So in the case of storage, we built up a 150 petabyte, 150,000 farmer network, uh, storage network, and we did it not by spending billions of dollars, but instead by giving the, the farmers, people who, who contribute this, uh, you know, a, share of the, a share of the revenue. And now we're doing the same thing on the demand side. You, you, I mean, you, you explained it last time their farmers and their mm -hmm. users. So it's yeah. more or less like Airbnb kind of model. Yeah, like Airbnb for disk drives. For, yeah. the, and, for the, and other people do Airbnb for yeah. compute. Yeah. So, so uh, does that solve the problem that we see in open source world of bu building business model? Well, no, it doesn't directly solve it. What you need to do is then take it the next step. So, what we described being Airbnb for uh, is how you can build the network and it builds it with different margins than traditional clouds. What we announced today, we think sort of completes the picture, which says, we'll also help compensate people for bringing demand to the network. And you know, much more than two thirds of the public cloud is driven by open source. Actually, 90% of all workloads are on Linux, uh, and then an additional two thirds of the, beyond the op operating system is driven by open source. So what our new program says is, hey, we will track, if you, if you work with us, we'll track whatever usage you send us, and we'll give you a share of the revenue. And in Storage's business case, it's pretty straightforward. Every dollar we get from end users, roughly 60 cents goes to the farmers. And then you know, we'll share a portion of that remaining 40 cents with any open source company or project that drives users to us. And they'll be running, you know, one of our partners is Minio. So if you're running Minio on, on Storage, 
that'll generate money for you. If you're using uh, MongoDB or Confluent or uh, Influx or any of these others and you're doing backups or you're doing snapshots and that gets sent to us and we can track that it comes from the open source project, We'll share with them. Why wouldn't we? It's in their best interest. It's in our best interest. So as you know, we discussed, you know, you have led so many open source companies. What got you interested in storage? What was you know you saw in there? Well, you, you might have seen some of it in the in the keynote today, right? I'm 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 really passionate about technology that can help give people great tools to build great things, right? And so um, I think storage is a really exciting idea because it. Uh, not only is it a great business model, which of course is, is great, but it, it, it ec economically empowers our farmers, which is fantastic. And now I think it can help economically empower open source because open source has been such a force for innovation and change. And yet I think it's in real danger because we don't have, we have this disconnect between open source creating all of this value and very little of it flowing back into the projects in a way that is something other than charity, which I don't think we need. I don't think we need charity. I think we need the open source projects to build great businesses so they can reinvest. Because you mentioned you know, in your slide also, there yeah. are like so many millions of people yeah. who are not paid or there's a big market, but it's not being tabbed. Yeah. And open source can very easily build the gap. Right, right. I mean, I think if you look at, um, you know, essentially open source has built the cloud, right? 90% of our workloads are run on some form of Linux. And then outside of the operating system, more than two thirds of the workloads are open source. So, you know, the public cloud is going to be about a $200 billion business this year. And yet if you look at the total revenues of all the public open source companies, it's about $5 billion. You know, there are 24 million people who are working in open source. The total employed by the public open source companies, 17,000. So something, something is, not, is not working. Um, and I think that approaches like this will work because the traditional cloud doesn't have the margins or the business incentives to do it. So a decentralized cloud needs to step into the, and, and help. Do you think this, this, the concept that you're building will also trickle down in other industries as well? Or do you already see people are, you know, they're getting interested in decentralized? Well, I think there's a lot of interest in decentralization, right? And, and so decentralized networks, you know, they have to provide more value than the existing ones, right? I mean, you know, people wouldn't come to storage as a storage service unless we were faster, cheaper, uh, more available, all the things that you care about in storage. Um, but we can do that because we're decentralized. It actually is an advantage for us. Um, uh, so I think there's a lot of interest. I think people need to open up their mind though to the idea that, hey, there's one way to build a network which is spending billions of dollars. There's a way to build demand, one way to build demand which is spending millions on sales and marketing. There's another approach which is a decentralized way which is you, know, you compensate people to help you build the network. And in our case now, we're gonna compensate people for doing our sales and marketing work for us. So during the keynote, you also mentioned the Open Source Partner Program. Can you tell us more about the program? Sure. So the Open Source Partner Program is the way we sort of formalize what I've just been talking about. So with the Open Source Partner Program, um, if you're an open source company that, you know, by your nature generates data that needs to be stored, uh, we give you tools to build a, a connector, and it takes about a day to build it, right? Um, and that gives your, your users the option of storing their data on the storage network. Um, in doing so, we're able to you know, track usage and built into the guts of our program, built into the guts of our network, compensation flows. So based off of how much users are sending to our, uh, to our network, money flows back. And we were thrilled. We sort of started to test this idea with a few uh, open source uh, companies that we're friends with, and the response was just overwhelming. And so if you look at who is uh, joined on day one, it's kind of a who's who. We've got Confluent, you know, the leaders in, in Kafka. We've got a number of database companies like Mongo and Influx and Couchbase and MariaDB. We've got Minio, which is sort of the new leading way that people are trying to build S3 compatible storage um, and, and, uh, and a host of others, probably another, another five others. Um, and that was just through making phone calls, right? And so we're really excited. We've had a lot of people coming by the booth today and, it, and it's clear that we've, we've touched a nerve. Right? It's not that we're so special. I think it's that people in the open source community are hungry for a way to monetize that isn't charity, <laughs> that, isn't, that doesn't involve weird licenses, but just says, hey, drive lots of usage, which is what you're good at, and then your business will grow. This is the question that I, I'm asking everybody and I'll ask you also, and you cannot evade it. When you're not building storage, when you're not changing the world, what do you do in your free time? Oh, well, I've got three kids. So between having run four startups and raised three kids, <laughs> you know, there's not a whole lot of spare time. 
Um, but I enjoy hiking, I enjoy backpacking, I enjoy, uh, enjoy nature. And so being here in, uh, in Vancouver is such a treat. <laughs> so so are, are you, did you plan any hikes here around here or you didn't get time for that yet? Didn't have time yet, but I'm hoping tomorrow I can sort of do Grouse Mountain. And, uh, awesome. See if that works, yeah. Thank you, thank you for your time today. Okay. So hopefully we'll see you again in the next Open Source Conference. Hey, thank, thank you. you.